So the console has pretty much two way of working. If I go over here into channel, right now you can see that the console has actually two different paths. It has a recording path and a monitoring path or mixing path. Accordingly with what we use, we're going to be facing different way of dealing with our audio. Right now we are into tracking mode. Now when in tracking mode, the SSL has been set it up in a way that the channel or the microphone input, it's actually going to be recorded. And everything else, EQ, inserts, dynamic, stereo Q are in our monitoring path. Even if we insert an EQ on the overall path of our recording, the EQ is only going to be in monitoring path. In other words, we're not going to be recording down to tape or to Pro Tools whatever EQ move we do. If we instead we want to change that while in tracking mode, again, the EQ could be switched at any different level. So by using the second row of buttons here, we could insert our EQ into the tracking path. And at that point, you're going to be committing the sound to whatever EQ move you do. That's why, in this case, the EQ is in our monitoring path. We could as well insert our insert. Let's say we want to use an external compressor or effect and record that effect in time within the track. Then we have to move our EQ or our insert within our recording path. Same thing goes for the Q stereo or the dynamics. So generally speaking, every time we have or we're dealing with a red path, that red path stands for tracking path. In other words, this is what is going to be fed to our main stereo bus when it comes to recording and that will be recorded in Pro Tools. Generally speaking, if you are unsure of what to do, you want to make sure to leave your EQ insert and dynamic into the monitoring path. It's great to listen to a track, but if you are unsure whether committing or not, it's always good to, re to record flat. As I was telling you, the SSL has two modes. Right now, we have just looked at the path of our tracking mode. I can use my rotor encoder to move across my templates. Again, over here we have the master template, so the macro level of each single file. As a matter of fact, there are different names of people that use the studio. If you are unsure of what to do or you haven't created yet your own folder, you might want to go into templates and then from here you can decide what to use depending on if you're mixing or tracking. Let's go into the monitoring or mixing mode. I'm going to use the rotary encoder over here to actually move to mixing mode. Press on the rotary encoder and as you can see right now mixing mode has been selected. Now what I want to do is go where it says TR, Total Recall, and as you can see right now we have a display of each single track into my mixer. Now to reset my board you want to go on Select making sure that in this case mixing mode is enabled. Go where it says channel and then double click to all. And right now the board has been fully normaled. Now another thing you want to do prior to record to start a project or prior to leave the studio is to again go where it says scan and what the console will do is take a screenshot of the whole board and telling you what are the parameters that have not been matched. In this case we have a problem on channel 23 or on channel 13 where it says that in this case our EQ here has not been matched. So I'm going to go on channel 13, grab the potentiometer of a uh, high mid frequencies and move it down. All right, there is another channel, channel 18. We have some problem the low mid frequencies and again we have one last white dot that needs to be matched 
And there we have it. So now we are 100% sure that the console has been normaled and we're ready to work on. Same thing goes if we want to record something. So let's say we want to record something. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to go into what it says tracking mode. I'm going to use the rotary encoder to move down to tracking mode. Click, select, total recall, select, channel, and then now you have access to all. So double click on all. And as you can see, right now the board has been fully normal for you to record. Remember, every time you are happy with whatever you have done, you can always store a snapshot of your recording session in your folder. How do you do this? You're going to go back to Project. You're not going to store anything within the template. Remember, the template is here for just having an easier and faster access to whether you're mixing or recording and starting a project. So you want to go back. And if you haven't created yet, you're going to go a new project and create a new project with your name. So you're going to click a new project. And as you can see right now, the new project is over here. Actually going to go back. There it is. I can go into my software, which I showed you before, and rename the new project. So this is going to be test. And there we have it. But right now, I want to store whatever we're done or our recording session within my folder. In this case, I'm going to go into Mateo. Those are all the projects that I've worked on. Now I'm going to scroll down to the last one, say New Title. New Titles appears here. I'm going to go inside my app, calling this Rec Project, and I'm going to save it. After you have created your folder, you want to start saving that presets or the way you have set it up your board inside your project. So the way to do it is go on TR, select, and right now we have our macro menu, which can be selected by these four buttons over here. I'm going to go where it says store. And I have right now saved a first snapshot of my, in this case, recording session because I'm in recording mode. Now I'm ready to leave the studio. I'm going to go project, back, template, tracking mode, total recall, select, put the encoder, channel, double click on all. And just to make sure, one click on scan. Nice. All channels have been matched. Now we're ready to leave the studio.